Okay, welcome back. Um, so first of all, got a little mistake on my page, don't I? This shouldn't have been negative six. This shouldn't have been two. This should have been negative six, right? This should have been my C value. This should have been my B value. So we could ask ourselves what um, factors of negative six would get me to that one. And we could realize that two and three, and it would actually be negative two and positive three um, to get back to one. However, that is not accounting for this two right here. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try this little diamond again because, again, like I told you, this diamond changes when your A value changes. So previously we had an A value of 1. We were able to use this. But now we have an A value that does not equal 1. So what do I do? I'm going to do A times C, and that value is what I'm going to put here. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And I'm still going to put my B value here. What factors of 12 would get me to 1? So we're looking at 1 and 12, 2 and 6 and three and four. Okay, well, two and six will never combine to one. One and 12 won't combine to one, but three and four would, and this is negative, this is positive, so that means I'm gonna put my three here, I'm gonna put my four here. If I make this negative, then this would be negative. That's not what I want, so I'm gonna make this one negative. So that becomes minus three x plus four x minus six. So now I do what we call by grouping. Let me get this out of the way so y'all can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, we're going to do what we call by grouping, which is that same process that y'all just used. So I'm going to write this out, 2x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 6. And I'm going to see that I've got a group right here, and I've got a group right here. So I'm going to write out my group with its factor. What's factorable right here in x? So that becomes x times 2x minus 3 plus my factor over here is simply a 2. So 2 times uh, 2x minus 3. And look at that. We have another common factor right here, 2x minus 3. So I pull that 2x minus 3 to the outside, and what I'm left with is an x, so that x comes down, and a plus 2, so that plus 2 comes down. And of course, I would foil back to check. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times uh, the outer is 4x. Through it, negative 3 times x is negative 3x, so that's our inner that combines to positive 1. And then I uh, multiply the last two, and that gives me a negative 6, so that is our correct answer. Okay, here's what I mean, what I said that I kind of skipped this factor. This is what they say when they say split the middle term. And I've got it written here. Um, you can pause, read through this if this one makes sense to you. But in essence, this is what we're doing with that factoring by grouping is that you're finding that middle term that's going to add up. So in S, you're just taking away the A times C. That's all split the middle term is, is what factors of that middle could I create. And so it's the same concept. That's why I just kind of left it as a slide. But what about our guess and check method? I've mentioned this in class, but this is very useful for quadratic polynomials, especially for those of us who are kind of visual with our methods. Uh, but there's very simple steps. So you set up your quadratic in the correct order, ax squared plus bx plus c. You identify your factors of a and c, and I like to write them out. You're going to see exactly how I like to do this. And you use what we call the outer inner method. And it's literally the, those factors on the outside, that would be your outer terms, right? Think about your foil first, outer, inner, last. Those would be your outer terms. The factors that we're going to leave on the inside would be your inner terms. So if I multiply the outer, multiply the inner, and add those together, that's the same as your intersection of the foil. So you find the correct set that would equal B. You place those terms in the correct spot, and you multiply back to check. So here's what I mean by that. Here's that example. We have 3x squared plus 2x minus 8. It's already in its uh, standard form, so I identify my factors of A, and then I identify my factors of C. But those aren't quite the factors of C, are they? Because I have to look at the fact that it's negative 8. So I'm going to go ahead and realize that some of these are positive and some of these have to be negative to give me that negative 8 value. So as you can see, that's one of the reasons why I write my factors both forward and backwards because negatives matter and so do positive, so does order. So I go ahead and use that outside inside method. So I'm going to look at my outside factors, 1 and negative 8, and multiply those together and I get negative 8. Then I'm going to look at my inside factors, 3 and 1, and that's 3 times 1 gets me 3. So that's negative 8 plus 3 equals negative 5. Well, does negative 5 equal 2? No, so those can't be it. So I check my next one, outer, inner, Put those together, negative 1 plus 24 equals 23. 23 doesn't equal 2. And again, as you're doing this guess and check, you can also recognize you don't even have to really do some of this math in your head. You can just see if that's going to be too big or too small to, to create that middle value. Outer, 
Negative four, inner, positive six. So let's put those together. That is two. Guess what? That means that is our correct uh, partnered set. So I'm going to keep those circled or whatever you need to see. And you're going to see that the factors on the left, those are going to be literally the first terms of the, bi of the binomial. The factors on the right, those are going to be the second terms of the binomial, the last terms, as y'all would call them. So we put one and three, and we bring down two and negative four. And of course, we have an x squared, so we can't forget that those x's go up there. So if I simplify that back, that simply becomes x plus 2 times 3x minus 4. And if I check back, if I FOIL, oops, if I FOIL back, then we can see if we get the right answer, which we should always do. So the first terms, that becomes 3x squared. My outer terms becomes negative 4x. My inner term becomes positive 6x. My last term is negative 8. This combines to negative 2x, so we are good to go. Our other method, our one of our second to last methods, I think, should be the quadratic formula. We should know this formula by now. If you're having trouble remembering it, I remember being in high school and we were taught this formula using your row, row, row your boat song, and it never left me. I always remember that formula. So if it helps you, I'll sing it for you now. So if you, again, singing the row, row, row your boat tune. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And it's okay if you don't use that, but if it helps you, it helps you. So just remember, any sort of memoriz memorization devices, they are important because they help us remember, even if they're silly. So <coughs> here I have an example. I identify my A, B, and C values. A is 1, B is negative 11, and C is 30, and I plug it into the formula. So I, pull, I went ahead and plugged it in. I simplified it down. I realized that that's simply uh, the square root of one. And now when I'm at my point where I can split it off because we have a plus or minus, I'm gonna go ahead and split them up into two different formulas. So it becomes 11 plus the square root of one and 11 minus the square root of one. So we're left with 12 seconds or 12 halves and 10 halves, which is just six and five. So those are our roots. So if there are roots, we have to see it as X minus six and X minus five. And we can foil back, we can double check that. So when I double check that, I did my first outer inner last, we got the exact same question. So the exact same original formula. So those are our two factors. Those are our two roots. Finally, we have synthetic division. This method is fantastic for your large polynomials. This is what we've been doing in all of unit two. When we learned about synthetic division, then we learned how to find the zeros of synthetic division. Guess what? It's the same exact thing with that depressed polynomial. So first you find your possible rational zeros. Then you begin testing using synthetic division. You test on the depressed polynomial until you get to x squared, which is our quadratic. You factor your quadratic and you multiply back to check. So we have this example, x cubed minus 7x minus 6. I went ahead and figured out your possible rational zero. Since a equals 1, I can just look at the constant. Remember, if a equaled anything besides 1, a coefficient greater than 1, or does not equal 1, then you have to use that rational zeros theorem. It's the factors of your constant divided by the factors of your uh, coefficient, your highest powers coefficient. So here are possible rational zeros. And I'm always going to start with positive and negative one. So I went ahead and created my synthetic division section. I plugged in those values, zero for my placeholder. And I did my synthetic division and I got a negative 12. So what does that mean? Is my root positive one a factor? Absolutely not. So x minus one cannot be one of my factors. Then I test negative one because that's what we do with synthetic division. We just test until we go on. So I went ahead and tested it and look, woo, we got a remainder of zero. So this means that x Negative one is a root. And what does negative one look like? It actually looks like x plus one. So I know that that's already one of my factors. And in fact, if I check down here, this was x cubed. This is x squared. So that means I'm ready to go. I'm ready to move on to our last couple of steps and factor out. Your battery's low. Okay, so there's my new polynomial on bottom. That's my depressed polynomial. We're at x squared, so I'm, I'm done synthetically dividing. And I can realize that it looks like this. I have one factor. I just need the second. Well, since it's quadratic, I went ahead and factored it out. And now I have all three factors. Uh, now I have all three factors for my synthetic division. So remember, you have all these different methods of factoring. So many different styles. And there's so many more out there if you really need to research and find some. Any method is fine as long as it's correct mathematically and as long as it works for you. Remember, 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 look for patterns because patterns make our math. Thank you so much and I'll see y'all later.